Equip Suppliers Limited Master Budget Preparation In this video tutorial we're going to look at Part B, the Cash Budget and Part C, the Budgeted Balance Sheet. Part A, the Income Statement, was covered in an earlier tutorial. Firstly, we'll just have a quick look at the Income Statement which we completed earlier. So we can see from this that we have the trading account down here and the profit and loss account part down here giving us the total income statement and a net profit of 28,873. In part B we're asked to do a cash budget so I'm going to set up the cash budget. The cash budget is for the three months January, February and March. So if I set this up I would just note here that I've got the sales across the top which aren't necessarily cash inflows but I've separated them from my cash inflows here by a double line. I'm now going to put in the cash inflows. Now if I just go back to the question and have a look, I can see that note number three, on average, 60% of the sales are cash sales with debtors on average paying the following month. Well, 60% cash, 40% will be debtors and they pay one month later. So if I go back to my slide here I can see of those sales in January 60% will be for cash so the cash will come in in the month of January which is 33,000 and the balance 40% will come in in February and that is 22,000. Of February sales, 60% comes in in February, 36,300, and the balance, 40%, comes in in March, 24,200. Of March sales, 60% comes in in March, which is 40,838. Now the balance won't come in until April. So on the 31st of March, we will have money owed to us, we'll have the accounts receivable, or we'll have debtors. Now, that just leaves us with this little bit here. Credit sales. What's that relate to? That's going to relate to the goods that we sold in the month of December of last year, and we get paid that in January. That figure would be in the balance sheet. So if we go back to the balance sheet at the 31st of December, we can see here we have debtors, 19,800. That represents goods that we sold during December and they are going to pay us in January. So I will put that in there. There's the 19,800 there and there just tidied up the rest of the figures and we add it up each month. Now in this particular question there are no cash inflows other than the cash inflows coming from sales. So that is the total cash flows inflows completed. It's the total cash inflows for January, for February and for March. Okay, so now we're going to look at the cash outflows. One of the areas that we worked out was the purchases. We did that in the income statement. So if I just go back to the income statement here, we can see that we have the purchases here. Now, one of the reasons we did these three little trading accounts for January and February and March was to calculate the purchase figure. We weren't actually given the purchase figure. Now if you go back to the question on the requirements, we can see note number four, suppliers of materials offer one month's credit for purchases. So you've got to bear that in mind. And then what we also have here is they have uh, the labor cost, we have the overheads, there's a note there in the labor cost, now if we just scroll down here we can see overheads which are paid or incurred include depreciation of two and a half thousand per month so I need to take note of that and then we also have the rent so we're going to take a note of the rent as well uh, note number seven tells us that they're going to pay some arrears in tax so that'll have to go in as well and then note number eight we have a repayment of a loan which is a cash flow it's a cash outflow not actually an expense but it is a cash outflow but then we also have the interest in the loan. So they will all have to go in. 
So if I go back to where I was, here, so I'm going to drop in here the cash outflows. And I'm going to list those ones I just mentioned. The purchase, rent, labor, overhead, taxation, the loan repayments, and the loan interest. So I just pop those in there. Now, what I will get here is my total cash outflows. And then these rows, three rows at the end, is where I work out the impact of the whole thing. So starting off with the purchases. So if I go back to my trading account here, the purchases for the month of January 17,080 and I just mentioned there that the suppliers allow one month's credit so what I have here is the 17,080 the purchases from January will go will be paid in February the purchases from February 20,570 will be paid in March so what figure gets paid in January? Well, in January, we'll be paying for the goods that we purchased in December. So I need to go back to the balance sheet and have a look at that. So I have trade creditors, 14,700. That represents the goods I purchased in December, and I'll be paying for those in January. So I will pop those in, beg your pardon, here. And that is uh, 14,000. 700. The rent, 36,000 per annum, and it's paid in two installments on the 1st of January and the 1st of July, so 18,000 gets paid on the 1st of January. And then the labour cost, well, we'll just pop back to the question here. Those three months there, they represent the labour for January, February and March, and note number five tells us labour costs are paid in full by the end of each month. So what I do is I just write them in here. So what I'll have is 14,500, 15,950, and 17,545. So that's my labor cost there. Okay, so what I'll do is I will just tie that up a little bit before I continue. So it is there, a little bit tidier there. Now we put in the overheads. Now if we go back to the question here, there are the overheads for January, but if I just scroll down to the next page here, overheads which are paid as incurred include depreciation of two and a half thousand per month. Depreciation is not a cash flow. So we will have to remove that figure. So we'll go back up here. I have 11,580 minus 2,500, and that would give me a figure of 9,080. So that's the figure that will be the cash overheads that we are planning to pay in January. And then so on down in February, I'll remove 2,500 from that, and in March, I'll remove 2,500 from that. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my where I was here, and I'll pop that in. So I have 9,080 as the cash overhead that will be paid in January. 10,238 cash overhead for February, and 11,512 the cash overhead for March. The taxation figure is the payment of the figure in the accruals in the balance sheet. So What's that figure there? 20,000. So the plan is they will pay that in the month of February. Now if we just have a look here, you see note number 7 tells us about that. The accrual figure is the balance. Uh, the, the accrual figure in the balance sheet the 31st of December represents the rears of VAT and corporation tax, etc, etc, paid by the 28th of February. So that's the figure that we need. So we put that in there. So that's 20,000. There's a loan repayment of 5,000. Note number 8. There will be a loan repayment of 5,000 on the existing loan on the 31st of March. So I'll put that in at the end of March. 
Right. 5,000 there. And then, actually, just go back to the, that same note. Um, interest on the loan is paid at the end of each month. Now, we know that the loan is a 10% fixed interest loan and the amount is 25,000. Remember, the repayment hasn't been made yet at this stage. So, if I go back here, I will have 25,000 by 10%. And I multiply that by one twelfth, or divide it by twelve, because that gives me two hundred eight point three three. Two hundred eight point three three. Now I'm not using decimal points in this. All these numbers are going to be shown to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to have rounding down by one third in January, rounding down by one third in February. So what I'll do is I'll round up by one third in March. Now, what that means is the total there for the interest will be the same as, just going back to the income statement, the total that we put in the income statement for the interest, 625, and the figure I've just written in there comes to 625. Now, it's just a little point, but it does mean that when you get to the end, uh, it should balance up. There's not going to be any rounding differences, because we're making a little adjustment here for the rounding. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these columns here. I'm going to slot the numbers in. So we're going to have the total cash outflows for January, total cash outflows for February, and the total cash outflows for March. So if I just tidy this up and pop those in, that's what I have there. Now, last little bit here, these three little rows here. The net cash flow. The net cash flow will be total cash coming in, total cash inflows, minus cash coming out, so it'll be a minus figure, and that gives the figure of minus 3688. The opening balance will be a cash figure on the 31st of December. Remember, the closing balance on the 31st of December becomes the opening balance on the 1st of January. I'm right doing January. So back to my balance sheet. There's the cash figure. 5,600. So what I can do is I can pop that in. So that's 5,600. So I have a minus 3688 plus 5600. That gives me a plus 1912. That goes in there. The closing balance at the end of January becomes the opening balance. 1st of February. The net cash flow for February 58,300 coming in, are projected to come in, 63,476 projected to go out. That gives me a negative cash flow, or a net cash outflow, 5176. So therefore, the projected closing balance at the end of February will be minus 3264. So it's a cash deficit. Now that goes into March, minus 3, 2, 6, 4. And then in March, we've projected cash inflows of 65,000, projected cash outflow of 54,000, which gives us a positive figure, 10,202, or a net cash inflow. Now, 10,202 minus the 3264, the deficit are coming forward from February, that'll leave us with a plus figure of 6,938 at the end of March. Now, I'm just going to tidy this up. So that's what we have. There is our cash budget for the next three months, January, February, and March. So, the last thing to do now is the budgeted balance sheet. So, go back to the question here. Here is the balance sheet we have at the 31st of December. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this structure and layout of the balance sheet. So, I'm going to have fixed assets, current assets, current liabilities, long-term liabilities. So, my total here will be total assets minus total liabilities, and then I'll have a finance buy or capital section at the end there. So, I'm going to take that as my template. So if I go to my projected balance sheet, I'm going to lay it out like this. Now in this part here, I will have to put in a little bit of depreciation. So the cost 
will be well the cost will be the 120,000 which is the figure from the balance sheet so if I go back and get that there it is there technically it's not cost it's the net book value but anyway it will do us so I have 120,000 goes in here the depreciation is here we have it from earlier seven and a half thousand remember it was two and a half thousand per month so seven and a half thousand so I put that in there and that will give us 112,500 now the current assets we have all these figures it's just a matter of finding them so the stock figure will be in the trading account the closing stock so look at the stock here we have the stock at the end of March 12,306 so I can put that in there the trade debtors well in March we're selling goods we're selling 60 million for cash so we get that money in but some of the money then we don't receive until the following month so we sell on credit so therefore the amount outstanding is 27,225 and that represents 40% of March's sales 27,225 the rent remember we paid 18,000 on the 1st of January for the next six months uh, we are three months through so 18,000 no, 36,000 for the whole year, 3,000 per month. We pay 18,000 for six months. We've gone through three months, so we've used up, so to speak, 9,000 of that, and we've 9,000 left. In other words, we've paid for April, May, and June, and we haven't used that yet. So that's 9,000 we've paid in advance. So that would be an asset. And then the bank figure, well, let's just go back here. This is our projected cash balance in the bank on the 31st of March. So we can pop that in, and that is 6938. The trade creditors, we are purchasing goods uh, from our suppliers, and our suppliers are giving us one month in which to pay us. So if we go back here, the goods we purchased in January, we paid for those in February. The goods we purchased in February, we paid for those in March. The goods that we purchased in March, we won't actually be paying for those until April. So on the 31st of March, that they will represent current liabilities. So if I put that in here. Actually, just what I do first, I'll add this up here and bring it out. So that's 55469 and there's only one item under current liabilities that's the trade creditor so i'll just bring that straight out there as well and that's the purchases uh, well the projected purchases from march just twenty three thousand one hundred and ninety six now that will be subtracted so it'll be asked minus the liability so i'll put a minus sign in front of that so i'm going to subtract that and then we have the loan the loan of course was twenty five thousand from the very beginning but there's a the repayment of five thousand on the 31st of March so the loan outstanding uh, at the 31st of March will be 20,000 okay so what I'll do is I'll just tidy this up a little bit and we have it there so there we have the net book value of the fixed assets we have the current assets minus the current liabilities and minus the long-term loan so now the very last thing here is the share capital so I'll go back to the question there's the share capital 70,000 and there is the profit and loss account that's like the profit and loss reserve account so we need those two bits of figures those two figures there which will take them to where we were so we have the ordinary share of capital I'll pop it in there 70,000 we have the profit and loss account reserve, i.e. the retained profit. 25,900, 
coming forward from the 31st of December. Plus, we have the retained profit for the three months that we're looking at. We projected retained profit for the three months of January, February, March, 28,873. So, I'm going to pop that in there. So that will be 28,873. Add those two together, and that gives me 54,773. So I'll add the capital plus the pro retained profit or revenue reserves, and that gives me 124,773. Now I'll just tidy this up a little bit, and then we can see that assets minus liabilities equals to capital, which is a reasonable suggestion that we've got our projections correct. Okay, that's the end of that. So, that's the end of that. So, we'll finish this little tutorial, and we've just completed then Part B, Cash Budget, and Part C, the Budget Balance Sheet for Equip Suppliers Limited. Remember, Part A, the income statement is in a previous video tutorial. Thank you.